Today, we're going to be creating this particular abstract pendulum kind of looping animation. So let's begin. In our default scene, we're going to hit X and delete the default cube. Then we're going to hit Shift A and add in a UV sphere and then press Control 2 to give it a subdivision surface of level 2. Alternatively, you can go to the modifiers and add in the subdivision surface modifier. After that, we're going to hit Object Shade Smooth. This is going to be our base pendulum. We can scale it down as well to maybe 0.5. But that's all the modeling there is. Now we're going to go ahead and add in another array modifier. And we're just going to increase the factor from 1 to 1.4 and increase the count to something like 10. Once we've added in those 10 spheres, we can set all of our animation defaults and add in an animation for the first one before applying the array modifier. So let's go to our render properties, switch on bloom, switch on screen space reflections, and then go to the output properties, change the frame rate to 30 frames per second, have the last frame to be 300, but we will change that very very soon. Change the output to wherever your file is stored or where you want it to be stored. Change the file format to FFmpeg video. Change the encoding from Matroska to MPEG4 and the up quality to perceptually lossless. Once we're done with that, we can just increase our timeline a little bit and then start off with the animation. So to actually rotate this, we could parent it to an object and do a lot of things, but I'm just going to go through the simplest route. We could also add in a string and rotate that as well, but we're not doing that in this particular situation. What we'll do is we'll hit N to open this side panel. Go to view and under view, you'll see the 3D cursor. There, under the z-axis, we'll just increase it to something like 5 meters so that we have the 3D cursor up there. Once the 3D cursor is up there, we'll just hit object, set origin to 3D cursor. So now the origin of the object is up there. And when you actually rotate it about the x-axis, you'll see it rotates about that origin. So it's just like a pendulum. In case you were adding a string, I'll quickly show you how to do that. You can just add in a cylinder, scale it down, something really small like 0 0.01 or 2 and then just scale it on the z-axis by something really large gz move it down and of course when you have it aligned with the 3d cursor do the exact same thing object set origin to 3d cursor and now you can just scale it on the z-axis until it matches up with the ball and there now you have a string as well attached to it if you select both of them and just rotate about the x-axis you'll see how the rotation works and you can create the same keyframes or you can parent the objects it's really up to you however i do not want strings for my animation. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete this. Now we're going to go ahead and just select our spheres, rotate it on the x-axis by let's say 30 degrees, and then go to our object properties here and just add in a keyframe for the x-axis by pressing this dot. You could just hit I, but that would add in a keyframe for x, y, and z, but we don't require keyframes on the others. So we'll just go ahead and keyframe just the x value. Now we can go to something like frame 60 and just rotate it on the x-axis by minus 60 degrees which is basically the 30 to go back to zero and another 30 to go back to the extreme on the other side. And then just go ahead and add in the keyframe right here. So now when you actually look at the animation, it's going to go up and then you can bring it back down by just taking this keyframe shift D and just move it to 120. So now you get a nice animation that goes up and then comes right back down. And because it's set to Bezier, it's going to slow down when it reaches the extreme over there. But the problem right now is that it ends at 120. And personally, I feel like it's going a little too slow. So you can just hit A, keep your cursor at frame one and just scale it down to make it move faster. So I'll scale it such that maybe the entire oscillation happens in two seconds or 60 frames. So now when you look at it, that's what it looks like. If you feel like that's too fast, you can go ahead and change that later on. However, we're now going to change the editor type from timeline to the graph editor. And here, if you actually press control and middle mouse button and just scroll down, you can actually zoom out on just the Z axis. If you press control and go left and right, it zooms on the X axis. So now you see the curve just ends over here. We want it to repeat so we can hit N to open the properties here. Modifiers, add modifier, cycles. And now it's just going to cycle about. This is when you have to finalize approximately what speed you think works best. So I think I want it to be just a little bit slower. So we're just going to go back to the timeline and just scale it on the X axis or just scale it till it goes to frame 80. So now it does one full rotation in 80 frames or one full oscillation in 80 frames. So now we can go back to the graph editor and just see at what frame we reach this top value again. So let's zoom in and just look at what value goes right to the top. And that's about 317. So what we'll do is go to our output properties here and change the end frame to 317. And now when you actually rotate between frame 317 and frame one, you should not see any motion in your spheres. So if we go to frame 317 and frame one, 
there should be no motion. So this is frame one and frame 317. You could just go to the timeline so that you have the frame number you're on over here and just type 1317 and just make sure that there's no motion. So we can see that there's no motion, which means this is perfectly at the same value. However, if we loop it like this, there'll be two frames that have the exact same image. So we don't want that. So we're going to end it one frame before that. Frame 316 is where we're going to end it. And that will create a perfectly looping animation as well. Now, all of these are going in the exact same way because they're a part of the exact same object. So we can now just apply our array modifier. And once we apply it, we can just hit tab to go into edit mode. Make sure we press A and everything gets selected. Then hit P, separate by loose parts. So now we're going to have 10 separate objects, all of them with the exact same animation data set up. So now we can go to our timeline or stay in our timeline itself and then just select our second sphere. Come here, A, G, 5 so that it moves by five units and it has like a small phase shift. Then we can select the next one, G10. And then the next one, go G15. And then the next one, G20, G25, G30, G35, G40, G45. So now if you actually play the animation, you see you get the entire wave-like motion. So what we did is we just gave each of them a phase shift of five frames. If you want to increase that phase shift, you'll have to change it for all of them individually again. However, now I'm going to just select our camera hit alt g alt r to clear location and rotation then rotate it on the z axis by minus 90 degrees rotate it on the y axis by minus 90 degrees and then grab it on the x axis and just move it back a little bit zero and then we're going to press n if this panel is not open if it is open let it be and just lock the camera to view so there's lock camera to view then hit n to move it and now we can just move our camera as we would in the 3d viewport and just place it to a nice position so something like this looks Fine. Now we can go ahead and just add in all of the materials and finish off the animation. So let's select one of our spheres, go to materials and add in a new material. We'll call this Bob material and then just select all of the other spheres. You could have added in the material right at the start so that we don't have to do this extra step but it's fine. We can just link materials now. So make sure the one that has the material is selected at the end and link material. So linking material is control L link materials. So once you have that done, we can actually deal with the materials. So to see the material, we can go into the viewport shading of rendered, hit N and just deselect the camera to view. Then go to the top over here, click and drag to create a new window. Now you can just zoom in and switch off overlays. Switch the editor type for this new window to the shader editor. Tap N to remove the side panel. Then go ahead and search for a Fresnel node by pressing Shift A and searching for Fresnel. Or you can use a layer weight node. So let's actually search for a layer weight node and then searching for a color ramp and then taking the facing and plugging that into the factor. Bring this in a little bit and connect the color into the emission color. Now we can increase the emission strength to something like 10 and we can go to the world and just change the color all the way down to black. The next thing that we have to do is get the light correct. So let's select the light, Alt G to clear location, and then G Z and just move it up by maybe around 10 units. Go to the light properties over here and just increase the radius to like five. Then with our sphere selected again, we can increase the metallicness to something very close to one and just reduce the roughness as well to maybe something like 0.3. Now you can actually see the animation and you can see the nice reflections happening and all of that. So once we're done with that, we want the color of the spheres to actually change over time as the animation progresses. So let's search for a mix RGB node. Change the type from mix to darken. Increase the factor all the way to one. And now you'll actually see that when you change the color over here, the color of the sphere changes. If your factor is all the way at one, it's going to change and completely become that color itself. So we'll keep the factor at one and we have to control this. The problem with keyframing, which I can just show you, is that if I keyframe this value over here and then go a few frames later and then keyframe maybe this value over here, the color actually reduce the value and things like that. It doesn't go through the actual circumference. So you're not going to have a value of one at all points of time. So that's not something that we want since we can't keyframe the values in here and we can only keyframe the color. We're just going to go ahead and clear keyframes and search for a combined HSB node. And here for the saturation, we can set it to one. And for the value, we can also set it to one. For the hue, we can search for a value node and just plug the value into the hue socket and place this color into the color over here. Now, if we go to frame number zero, or let's start off at frame number two and just hit I, we can then go to like frame three, one, four, and then change it all the way to one and hit I. Also make sure that this is set to linear, but we don't want the other things to get set to linear. So just make sure that you have only those two keyframes selected. So the keyframe at frame two 
and the keyframe at frame 314. Shift select to select both of them and then T linear. If you aren't sure which one is which, just open this panel over here by pressing that little icon over here. There's a little arrow mark at the side. You can just click that and it opens. Increase the summary and there you'll see the material has some keyframes and underneath that the keyframes will be shown and you can just select those two keyframes, hit T linear. So now when you actually play the animation, it's going to change color nicely. However, I feel like this is a bit too saturated. So I'm just going to reduce the saturation to something like 0.95. So now the last thing that we have to do is add in a plane. So we're just going to hit shift A, mesh plane, and we're going to scale it up. We're also going to hit alt G to clear its location and bring it down. And now we're just going to scale it up till it's completely out of view. Then we're just going to grab it on the Z axis by GZ and just move it down till the bottommost sphere just goes above it. So there we go. And now select our plane and give it its new material. So new material, we'll call this plane. And if you can't find the material in your material tab, although it's right over here, a quick trick is pressing period on the numpad and that brings it into view. So now we're going to increase the metallicness of this also quite a bit. So maybe 0 0.9. And for the roughness, we're going to go ahead and just search for a noise texture and a Voronoi texture. And this happens to be my favorite combination. You can put the color into the vector, increase the scale of the color to something large. We'll see how large a bit later, but search for a color ramp so that you have control over how reflective and non-reflective it is and just plug that into the roughness. So right now the scale is too small and so we're going to increase it to maybe 100 or 150 and that seems like a much better scale, maybe 200. This depends on how large you've scaled your original plane. So I just scaled it up to an arbitrary value. Anyway, I don't want to see anything outside the camera so I'm just going to switch on overlays, select the camera, go to the camera properties, go to viewport display and increase passport out all the way to one then switch off overlays once again. Now I can see the animation and there are quite a few changes that I want to make. First thing, I'm going to increase the scale to something even larger, 400. Now I'm going to crunch the black in and increase the black value so that it's not completely reflective anywhere. And then the white, I'm also going to reduce it so that it's a bit reflective in most places. Along with that, I'm going to make it completely metallic and just change the base color to, till it's completely white. And with that, we get our animation. Of course, you could do something where you actually take your light and change the color of the light to match whatever the color of the emission is. And then you could just render out the entire animation as a single color. But personally, for now, I think I'm going to keep it as black and white and have the only color be from the emission of the spheres. So that's just a personal preference for me. If you feel like the reflections aren't too good, you can go to your render properties and under screen space reflections, you can actually reduce the thickness to maybe 0 0.01. You can increase the edge fading. You can increase the trace precision and just play around with those properties. If you want this to actually go even higher as in the rotation on the x-axis, for all of them together, what you could do is just select all of them, switch over to the graph editor, press A to select everything. So when you hit A to select everything, make sure that you go to the side and under Bob material, you just switch this off so that it's not seen. Otherwise, even the Bob material value will get scaled and you don't want that. So now you can just scale it up on the Y axis and you can see how it just increases the amplitude of oscillation. And you can get really crazy with this. For now, I'm just gonna scale it back down on the Y axis. So something like that seems fine and also just select my camera and grab it back on the x-axis. Grab it on the z-axis and just play around till I'm happy with it. And with that, the only thing that's left to do is go ahead and hit render animation. I really hope you enjoyed this particular video and you can use this technique to create various other animations as usual. Remember that just watching this video is not enough and you actually have to sit and work on a few projects to get various ideas. And hopefully by the time the next video comes out, you're definitely gonna stay creative.